this video, I'm going to talk about how to figure out what the best fit line to data should be. And this is a follow-up exercise from the uh, Planet Phaedra activity from your pre-lab for lab two. So if you haven't already looked at that, please go to the pre-lab document first and answer the questions in there and then come to this video afterwards. So in the activity, um, we're talking about how to fit lines to data. So there's a couple of tactics that people often use um, to talk about fitting lines. So one of them, for example, is the idea that um, the number of points should be balanced above, above and below the line. Another thing um, people talk about is trying to, if your data's a little bit tighter than that, is like trying to go through as many points as possible, um, which is another good way. But things kind of, these usually work, but things kind of get complicated when you're dealing with data with uncertainty. So in particular, if we have data points uh, with really small uncertainty, and then a couple that have really big uncertainty, um, you want to sort of, um, so one might think that a line, uh, you might want to draw kind of in here or something, but obviously these points with smaller uncertainty are ones that we know better. So we want to put more attention to those ones. And so maybe the best fit line would actually be um, something like that. So this sort of, uh, so let's, uh, first of all, let's just set the stage here. So I'm gonna, um, so let's draw some axes. So we've got X and Y axes. And um, we've got some data points, again, that have different uncertainties. Um, and then a line that's gonna kind of go through them. Let's say it's that. Um, and so each of these points then, um, this one is our first data point. So let's give it coordinates x1, y1. Uh, and then this one would be x2, y2. So each of our data points is xi comma yi. But our y values have uncertainty. So uh, we'll call these uncertainties delta y. Uh, I guess we're at four by this point. So each of the y values has uncertainty delta y i. So I was talking about wanting to take the, um, get the points with small uncertainty as close to the line as possible, but the points with larger uncertainty can be a little bit further away. And so that's sort of like we're, um, first of all, just taking the difference between a data point, so it's y value and the point on the line, so the equation of the line might be mx plus b, so we're subtracting mx plus b. And so uh, you can think of this as taking this vertical deviation here from the point to where it is on the line. Uh, of course, you could do perpendicular distance, you could do the x differences, um, but because we've got uncertainty in y, we're gonna stick with the y values. So we want the points, the differences, we're actually kind of working in units of uncertainty here. So if we divide by the uncertainty, then that means that we, um, if we wanna balance sort of the numerator and the denominator, that means that points with small uncertainty, we need the top part to be small so that it balances the small uncertainty on the bottom. But the points with larger uncertainty, we can let the numerator be a little bit bigger, so the y values can be farther from the line to balance the larger uncertainty there. And so one way that you might look at this, you can actually make a um, plot of these differences. So we call this thing the numerator, we call it the residual uh, distances or differences. And so you can actually make a plot of the residuals, which can sometimes be really useful so if we put our x values along the y x axis and our uh, difference is yi minus mx plus b along the y axis, then our first point is sitting a little bit above the line and it's got its error bars there. The second point is looks like it's right on the line with its small uncertainty there. The third point is way above the line, sort of up here maybe 
but it's got pretty big uncertainty, and then the second point is a little bit closer, and so its uncertainty crosses. So that kind of helps you visualize what's going on here. If your differences are quite small, then this kind of exaggerates uh, how it's bouncing. And what we want is for the points to be kind of randomly scattered in units of uncertainty. So going back to try to kind of quantify this thing, so we can also try to think about getting a, a number actually out of this, so an average number. So uh, we might want to add up this thing. Uh, so this is a summation from i equals 1 to n, and add it up for all of the points, and then divide by the number of points that we have to take an average. But of course, you may be thinking, well, some of the points are going to be above the line, some of them are going to be below the line, so this thing is going to switch from being positive to negative, so we should keep it one sign, so we'll keep it positive. Um, and we're going to do that by squaring this thing on the top. So you could imagine taking, whoops. Okay, and so this thing is what we call um, the chi-squared value. My pen is really slow. Um, and this is what we're going to use to do fitting from now on. So uh, this whole guy. And using this, um, we want this number, this average, to be as small as possible so that the lines, the points are in units of uncertainty as close to the line as possible um, with the squared average. So we'll talk more about it in class, but I just wanted to give a quick demo so you have a starting place for the um, lab too.